Profits are saying that this motor show at Earl's Court is the last one with Britain outside the common market. Already the automobile industry in this country accepts the challenge of selling in the continental countries. New models like the Cortina from the Ford stable will catch the eye of hundreds of buyers visiting the show from across the channel. The British Motor Corporation ranges over the entire field of motoring, meeting almost every need and every purse. The Morris 1100 on the stand here were a frock, you would say it leaves nothing to the imagination. Everything that makes the wheels go round is on view. Looking at that exciting power unit of the Mini Cooper are Val Guest and Yolande Donlan. A combination, this engine and chassis, of economy and performance. The name Riley has carried weight for more than a generation. On the stand here, it was carrying two girls from the windmill. Smallest car made by Riley, the Elf, has an 850cc engine and front-wheel drive. Obviously, a car to take the female eye. The Hillman Super Minx is an eyeful, standing up to the competition of the three lovelies trying it out for comfort. From the 1600cc engine to the back axle, the Super Minx spells luxury travel. Automatic transmission is available, and here's something to appeal to every car owner. It has no greasing points at all. About time we arrived at that. New just before the show is the Triumph Spitfire, claiming to be faster and altogether more luxurious than any sports car of the same price. Twin carburetors serve the Spitfire's hotted up version of the Herald engine. Step on it and you're up in the 90s. In another price range, the three to four thousand pound class, the Jensen, with that fugitive from the Whitehall, Brian Ricks, quite interested. The engine, a six litre V8. The Jensen, just the job for the connoisseur who's not too hard up, will loiter at 10 miles an hour or hit 130, depending on how far you put your foot down. Rovers aren't showing that gas turbine car all the motoring world's waiting for, but in the conventional field, their three-litre models and others of their range attract a big following. However many people get to the motor show, millions who'd like to can't go. So Pathy News lavishly covers it in Technicolor and brings it to you in this theatre. The coupe has lines stylish enough to appeal to the continental markets, plus the performance to which those route nationale and autobahns afford scope. Fellow obviously something in the city, the Ford Zephyr looks just the ticket. What a pity, it's for the police. Solved, the problem of how to carry a big dog without letting him push you through the windscreen. Admit him by the back door into a large cage, and then if he has an impulse to leap onto the front seats at a critical moment, well, he can't. Jaguar is a magic name on both sides of the Atlantic. Lord Montague must have found the E-Type quite a contrast to those vintage cars he collects at Beaulieu. This car industry is one of Britain's big dollar earners. Perhaps in the next few years, it will expand and put us really on the map of Europe. Certainly this model has been an outstanding success since it erupted on the sports car world less than two years ago. Called up for Earl's Court, the famous 3.8 six-cylinder engine. Much smaller, but very much in the high performance class, the Lotus Elan, built on the foundation of racing success and with refinements every owner will appreciate. Nowadays, the sports car field offers so much, the girlfriend looks like becoming choosy. So 
somebody's fascinated by those headlamps. These days, everybody has motoring jargon on the tip of his tongue. Salesmen can't afford to bluff. And anyway, bluff isn't called for. The Lotus Elan has twin two-choke carburetors and, of course, disc brakes. The MG 1100, a winner in its class if ever there was one. As for the Continental Bentley, where is the motorist with 9,000 pounds to spare who could possibly resist it? Edmundo Ross, who knows a quality car when he sees one, was full of admiration. It's bewildering, this multitude of fine cars, more than holding their own in the world's most competitive industry. Manufacturers are now concentrating their gaze on the lands across the channel, where in all probability, great new markets, the common market, await those who can deliver the right goods at the right price. If this year's motor show is any guide, the British car industry will rise to the opportunity.